January 21st, we saw some of the craziest college matchups to date this season. We saw number one ranked Nittany Lions enter into Ann Arbor facing the Michigan Wolverines, who are looking to take on the Nittany Lions in March. One team is super young talent that have already proven themselves on the national stage, and their team has some returning future veterans looking to finally get their chance at the top of the All-American stand. However, this would not be one of the best weekends of college wrestling so far if it was only one duel. We also saw very questionable returning national champs travel down to Columbus, Ohio to face a young but scary Ohio State team that is ranked in the top 10 with their only loss coming to the previous mentioned Michigan. Both duels had electric matchups, both duels had All-Americans battling against each other, and both duels highlighted why the Big Ten is the best conference in college wrestling. However, before we dive headfirst in this amazing weekend, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video from True Tan Wrestling. If you love this weekend as much as I did, hit that like button, and if you haven't done so already, consider hitting that subscribe button for more content in the future. Now, let's talk about this monster of a weekend. Also, P.S. to my ACC Week fans, I know that's a small number of you, <laughs> but I would have covered NC State versus Virginia Tech here as well, but uh, <clears throat> it got canceled. Nevertheless, I hope Virginia Tech's program is okay, and I'm glad Campbell stepped up to wrestle NC State and fill in a duel for them. Alright, let's actually get out of the intro and start this beast of a video. I'll start in chronological order and highlight the notable results from Penn State and Michigan first. So Hawkeye and Buckeye fans, unfortunately you have to wait a few minutes to hear about your team around the midpoint of the video, even though that duel was a little bit more competitive than this one. With that said, Michigan did lose almost every toss-up match, but this duel was still super competitive and really fun to watch. The key matchup everyone was talking about entering this duel was easily Brooks versus Amin at 184. Brooks is a returning national champ, and Amin plays bronze at the Olympics just this summer. This match was super competitive from the word go, and I think everyone expected it to come down to the final sequence, with Brooks coming out on top with the takedown and the ride out to win 3-1 over the Olympic bronze medalist Miles Amin. This really puts into perspective how far ahead Amin and Brooks are from the Big Ten field, considering Brooks has been killing everyone else on his Big Ten schedule. However, this rivalry is far from over, and I am sure we will see it again. Strzoki vs. Massa at 174 was once again super tight between the two superstars. The returning national champion Strzoki would come out on top 3-2 with some controversy throughout, but Massa would seriously push the returning champ and he clearly still has some serious skills, so the 174 field should not take him lightly. Staying up on the heavy boys at 197, we saw maybe the most gritty match of the night between Brucky of Michigan, the Princeton transfer, taking on and pushing Max Dean of Penn State, who was a Cornell transfer. So he had a little Ivy League matchup here, <laughs> I guess. Brucky would score a few points to take the lead and just looks super strong and really difficult to wrestle at this weight class, but Dean dug deep and fired back and gained a massive ride out to send the match into overtime and then score the winning sudden victory takedown. The most mysterious match of the duel was easily Kirkfleet versus Paris at heavyweight, and I say mysterious because even though the two have wrestled before, no one really knew how much better Kirkfleet has gotten, plus he beat the Michigan heavyweight in freestyle right after the NCAA season last year. So the main question was, could Kirkfleet get out on a dominant guy like Paris? Because he really hasn't been tested much this year from the top position. Well, let me tell you, this match was a great way to end the duel, well, unless you were a Michigan fan. Kirkley would score several impressive nice snatch singles and escaping from the bottom position with nice technique to beat the returning national finalist 8-5 to close off the Penn State versus Michigan duel. This goes without saying, but this was a crazy upset and it shows how great Kirkley has gone in a relatively short amount of time. I'm not too sure how it would stack up against Gable Stevenson, of course, but this could be another national finals with Penn State, which would be massive points for the Nittany Lions. He will still have more major tests throughout the year, like Cassiope coming up this week, but this was a great win for him and Penn State. Other notable matches were 125 with Drew Hildebrand of Penn State versus Nick Suriano at his new home, Michigan, being way more lower scoring than I would have guessed. I knew Hildebrandt would give him a fight, don't get me wrong, I wasn't projecting him to get major or anything, but I did not expect Suriano to win the way he did. He won an impressively gritty ride to score the Ryan time point and to start Michigan off with the first points of the duel, winning 2-1. I think this result is a cause of just good coaching and both guys being overly scouted and neither guy wanted to really get into the other guy's position. 
you're a Michigan fan, I don't think you should be worried that Nick Seriano didn't bonus point a returning fourth place finisher. And Nick Seriano is definitely still the front runner, in my opinion, at this weight class. And if you're a Penn State fan, I think this kind of shows that Hillebrand has the skills to be a really high All American again. Finally, the last super interesting match of the night, we saw Berge knock off top 10 ranked and turning All-American Cam Amina, Michigan. Cam has been out for a while, I'll give him that. So this was his first match back, but this was a wonderful win for Berge and his growth at his new 165 pound weight class, and it shows that he can really be a threat at this loaded 165 Big Ten field and national field. Other matches to include were RBY taking out Raguson again at 133, just missing out on the major, and then Sally no Nick Lee versus Michitz at 140. So Lee would wrestle 133 bump up Drew Matten and win via tech fall, which was massive in this duel. And then Barlett would get an injury default win over Cole Matten at 149, which was very, very, very bad for Michigan in this duel, kind of taking it out of their hands at that point. But I hope Matten returns healthy since the Wolverines are really hurrying at the 149 weight class now. We saw Bear Claw for Penn State back at 157, and he normally wrestles pretty good in Ann Arbor, but Luan was just a little bit too tough for him and would send the Wolverines in the break with a win, but that would unfortunately be the Wolverines' last win on the night, only winning 125 and 157, truly showing how impressively good the Nittany Lions are this season, winning the mega matchup 29-6. I think this duel was really telling for both teams, and this duel truly shows that Penn State will continue to stretch their gap between themselves and the field throughout the season. And Michigan is kind of hurting right now, and I hate to say this, but if some of their guys don't return, they're sort of leaving the top four conversation, which is crazy to think that they were in the national title conversation just a few weeks ago. But just due to injuries and low performances lately, it just is hard to put them even in the top four in my opinion. But it is late January, so they have over a month to really keep developing these studs and they really didn't look too bad against Penn State, who they just don't really match up well against. To all the Buckeye fans that stuck around that enjoyed me talking about Michigan losing, let's travel down to Columbus where we saw top 10 Ohio State take another loss on the year to number two and returning champs Iowa Hawkeyes, who continue to have questions up and down their lineup. For starters, this duel started off with a huge bang, and if Ohio State wanted to really try and get this upset, they started the train as right as they possibly could. With Malik Heinzelman, who has been sneaky good this season, beat freshman star Drake Al of Iowa. This is a sudden victory thriller with Heinzelman getting the final takedown to win 7-5, putting the Buckeyes on the board first. At 133, we saw the return of Austin DeSano for Iowa, which makes the redshirt pull of Shriver even more confusing to me. But regardless, DeSano with Tech Falcons of Ohio State at 133, and DeSano's hand is still taped up, so maybe that's why he was out for those duels, but regardless, we move right along to 141. D'Amelio of Ohio State kept Ironman to a 4-0 decision, and another pretty close match to Ironman's resume, but D'Amelio wrestled him tough, and Ironman basically controlled the whole match, so these are still wins, and he's still undefeated on the year. 149 was way more competitive this year compared to last season's match. Iowa was starting to take the duel back into their hands, so the Bucks really needed a returning finalist to show up, but there was one problem staying in his way, and that was the brawler Max Mirren for Iowa came to really fight in Columbus. As the clock started to tick down in the third period, Mirren was up 2-1, and Sasso would roll and scramble around for a while to get the last effort reversal and ride out to win 3-2. This was a great wrestled match by both guys and super entertaining for only being a 3-2 win. Young would secure a win over Hubbard of Ohio State at 150. I still think Hubbard is a mini sleeper in the 157 field, but the Big Ten's a little tough for him right now, so we will see, and he still battles, and this is a nice win for Young to keep him on the right path until conferences. Then there was the match I could not wait to watch for, and it was right after the dual intermission to keep us all on the edge of our seats. Carson Karchula, the outstanding freshman for Ohio State, taking on the regular season champ for the Iowa Hawkeyes and veteran Alex Marinelli. This match almost went exactly how you would have expected, but somehow it was still unbelievably entertained and kept wrestling fans, especially Ohio State fans, on the edge of their seats. Marinelli would get a nice ride out to get the Ryan time point advantage, but Karcher would get out essentially losing 2-1. to one. With not much time left, Karcher would push the pace and go for his signature drag to defeat the longtime Iowa All-American and marking another amazing win on his resume. 
Also, Marinelli started chirping at the crowd, so I don't know what that was really about. But regardless, I can't wait to see this matchup again, and this freshman is the real deal, everybody. Kemmer still looked great, even though the score between him and Ethan Smith was close at 174, but Kemmer will win the bout with his shoulder brace looking like it is not even an issue. But Romero would keep the Bucks alive, taking out a Basad of Iowa at 184, who was really starting to peak, it seems, from how he was wrestling earlier in the season. However, Romero would still get the win in sudden victory. Then at 197 we had Gavin Huffman of Ohio State taking on Hawkeye All-American Warner who looked great having a super awesome match with Hoffman. The only down part of this match was the first period, Hoffman giving up an early takedown and Warner and Hoffman would then continue to keep going out of bounds from the bottom position which kind of got old after a while. But after that somewhat boring first period, the match was wild with Hoffman almost coming back for the victory. Ultimately though Warner would get the win and grind out a gritty match. The team score was 17-12 in favor of the Hawkeyes entering a heavyweight, and besides Orndorff, the Ohio State returning All-American, hitting a nasty arm spin to get the first takedown, it was all Cassiope dominating the Ohio State wrestler, 13-4, winning by major decision, sealing the Iowa victory. So to answer my own question, was this the best weekend in college wrestling so far in the 2022 season? Well, CKLV was pretty awesome, but from a dual perspective, heck yes. And if we saw Virginia Tech versus North Carolina State, I would even be more confident that I would stamp on a heck yes for the best weekend so far. We also saw South Dakota State upset Missouri, which is huge for their program as they continue to be an elite Big 12 powerhouse. Plus, Lehi versus Oklahoma State was fun at some points. Michigan State upset Rutgers in the Big 10. I know Rutgers have been having a great year, so this is a great win for Michigan State. And also, Nebraska got back on their horse again to end with Wisconsin's undefeated season and I could go on and on and on but I just figured I'd give some other duels some love since I mainly just talked about Penn State versus Michigan and Ohio State versus Iowa since those were the two highlight duels of the weekend but this season is not going to cool down with Penn State taking on Iowa this weekend and don't worry I'll make a video covering all that action so I will see you all in that video have a nice day everyone and thank you very much for watching if you like this style of video consider subscribing and if you like this video especially, hit that like button. Now, take care everyone, and I will see you in the next one.